next we have another entry of set selection and this time we know that we set the selection to none so we deselected it then we went ahead and renamed the layer so we'd know what was going on inside the image just for reference of course now the following two steps are when we turned the visibility of the layer off and then on again to see what it looked like without the frame no problem with doing that except we've added it as part of the action so every time we run this action in the future it's going to turn the eyeball off or the visibility off and then turn the visibility back on again and it's all going to happen so fast we're not going to notice it so in other words it's a really inefficient way to run an action it's going to take longer to complete and even though the file size of these actions are minuscule there's never a good way to make a file larger than it has to be now I know in reality it's not going to make too much of a difference but the more complex your actions become the harder it is to keep track of what's going on inside them as regards to editing them and also sending them off for other people to use because you can save these actions out and email them to somebody else with Photoshop and let them load them up and use them on their own images and as it happens we can delete steps from an action by simply dragging them down to the delete icon in the same way as we would inside the history or the layers palette for instance so I'm going to drag the hide and show current layer operations to the delete icon and they've been deleted from our action now so far so good the trouble is though because I want to run this action on around about 10 photographs I don't want to have to save them all individually myself so I'm going to include the saving process in the action as well so with that in mind what I need to do first of all is start recording and it's important to know that we will always commence recording after the currently selected action step so we want to make sure that the last action step is active which in this example is going to be the set current layer step where of course we renamed the frame layer now I'm going to hit the record button once again and we're now recording our operations once again so with that in mind I'm going to come up here to the file menu and select the save as command that's going to open up the save as dialog box and I'll just make sure that I've got that on screen here it is a fairly large dialog box as you can see now the trouble here is that if I give this image a new name then every time I run this action it's going to try saving the image into not only the same path but it's also going to try saving it with the same name so the action will either fail or worse still it'll overwrite the previous versions inside the folder and that's no good of course because instead of having all of our completed and saved images sitting here inside this folder waiting for us we'll only find one image because that's overwritten the previous one we saved and the previous one we saved will have overwritten the image previous to that one and so on and so forth so what we're going to do here is first of all navigate to the actions tutorial folder and you can create your own actions tutorial folder if you want to or you can just follow along with me on screen here then I'm going to hit the new folder icon up here in the top of the dialog box Mac users will find this a little different but the principle will still be the same the other thing you could do is to switch to the Adobe dialog box by hitting this button down here but because of course we're still recording our action we don't want to go ahead and do that right now so for now I'll stick with Windows and name my new folder Arches NP for National Park Emails and then accept that name change now I'll navigate inside the folder and then I'll change the file type to JPEG no point in saving as a PSD file if we're just emailing these images for somebody else to view we also want to keep the file size to a minimum so uh, a PSD file will not do the job here now that's inserted the word copy after the file name but that's fine the main thing is we've left the file name set to Photoshop's creation now I'm going to go ahead and hit the save button which of course brings up the JPEG saving options and because we're sending this by email I'm going to set the quality to high and then just make sure we're saving as baseline optimized and then hit OK finally I'm going to come up here to the file menu and select the close command which will prompt me to save the image once again and if I go ahead and save it here then I'm going to overwrite the original file which is something I definitely don't want to do courtesy of the fact that we've downsampled the image and added a frame over part of it so I'll click no and if you're working along with me maybe with your own images then I'll urge you to click no as well 
Now we need to stop the action recording and we'll do that by selecting the stop button over here on the actions palette. OK, now for the moment of truth, we're going to test the action and then run it on a batch of images we're hoping to email out to Aunt Fanny or whoever we're sending them to. I'm going to make sure that we've got the action itself active. Then I'm going to hit Control Shift O or Command Shift O on the Macintosh to open up the bridge. And I'm going to select this second image here. Remember, we've already worked on the first image and saved it inside the correct folder for emailing later. I'm also going to shift click on the final image and then hit Control or Command O to open up all 11 images, answering the bridge's questions along the way. Yes, we do want to open all 11 images at once. And it's going to take a moment or two here to open all the files successfully inside of Photoshop. And this is a good opportunity to tell you that in addition to deleting and adding steps inside an action, you can also edit a step as well. And you can do that by control or command double clicking through the steps to play them one at a time, and then just double clicking on the step when you reach it to bring up any dialog boxes that are available. Now I think we're ready to roll. I'm going to come over here to the actions palette and press the play button, and there we have it. You may be able to see all of the action steps being applied and the noticeable changes of the image on screen. Then of course it vanishes from view as the action saves and closes it for us. And that's great. I'm going to press the play button to once again make changes to the next image. And I can just sit here pressing the play button and see how quickly this actually moves through the processes. It doesn't follow any time sensitive issues that we had when recording the action. It just plays it back step by step and that's why it's important just to take your time when recording an action because you don't suffer from any time delays when you're actually playing the action back. And you can also start to imagine the time we're saving by creating this action and not applying all of these modifications to each image one by one in a really slow manner as we usually would when we're doing things manually. And as I said before, we can load and save actions at will You'll notice that we have an ATN extension so that we have a fully fledged file format for the actions command that you can send to other people. You can also create an action in one version of Photoshop and then load it up and play it in another. And don't forget you can make actions as complicated and as long as you like. OK, I'm going to press Control Shift O here on the PC, that's Command Shift O over on the Mac to open up the bridge. Then I'll navigate inside the Arches NP email folder and there we have all 12 of our images. I'm going to select any of these images to open up inside Photoshop and there we see our fading frame with the image inside. If we wanted to change the name of all 12 of these files at once then we could use the batch rename command inside the bridge to carry that task out. And if you want more information or instructions on how to do that, then check out my batch renaming tutorial available on the freephotoshop.com website. It'll also be links from this page that you're viewing this tutorial from um, so that you've got an easy form of access to it. If you're not viewing this on freephotoshop.com, then I'd suggest you come on over. It's the only place to find all of the tutorials I've ever created in their original high quality production. In the meantime, I hope you've found this tutorial right here on freephotoshop.com to be helpful. Thanks very much for watching. <music>